Hello and welcome to lesson one of week four of Julia programming for nervous beginners in which we start working with text files and we put into uh, practice all of that we have learned so far. So uh, in this lesson we are just going to talk about methods for opening, reading from and writing to text files. So after this lesson um, you'll, have, you'll be able to discuss why file input-output is fundamentally risky for a computer. You'll be able to describe different kinds of access to files, a read-only access, write-only, or read-write access. Um, and when you have read-write access, you may be doing it discarding or retaining the file data that are already in the file. You'll be able to use open to create a file handle specifying what type of access is needed. You'll be able to use read and read lines to read from a file with an open file handle. And you'll be able to use write to write to a file with an open file handle. And finally, you'll be able to use close to close a file handle. File I.O. in general, um, this is uh, new for us so far. You've been using programs that generate their own data. But of course, most of the time, working with data means that we download files or we import the files into our current computing session um, using file I.O. And um, the important point here is that you should think of a file arriving in your Julia program's workspace as, a, as if it's like a stranger at arriving at your door. That stranger could be bringing you a package you've been waiting for for a long time, or that stranger could be trouble. So for human beings, we have developed ways of um, judging a person by their appearance, talking to them, to try and find out exactly how we should treat them, how much we can trust them. For better or worse, computers do not do that sort of thing. And so instead, designers of most programming languages, Julia included, put the responsibility for avoiding trouble on you, the programmer. In practice, this means that you ought to have a pretty good idea that the files you are about to use are not monstrously large so that your computer will fill up with them and won't be able to do anything, or that the and you must be pretty sure that they have no malicious content and you should know the format of the file you're about to open. So malicious content is not something I will discuss in this course. It's a really difficult uh, subject. Uh, it's not easy for a file to contain malicious content and put it on your computer so that something can happen uh, because of that. Um, and, it's very un uh, and it's certainly not the case that the file that we are going to ask you to use contains any malicious content on this course. We use only one format, flat text files, and they consist solely of characters. But many other formats are used, in particular specialized formats limited to specific purposes and domains in astronomy or in audio processing and, and all kinds of uh, purposes. So, a file to be used for I.O. can arrive in your computer in very many ways, uh, via internet download, via memory devices such as hard disk, or USB sticks, via measurement devices, via cameras, and all kinds of methods. However, once they're there, the same thing applies to all of them. So it's on your computer. Now you want to use in your computing session. You have to open a connection to the file. Then you read or write to the file, and then you have to close the connection. So that, those three steps are common to all file I.O. So the important point of opening the connection to the file is that you use the correct path from your working directory to the directory where the file is. We don't cover it on this course. We simply assume that uh, the file is in the same working directory as your code. Um, the second point is, in Julia, there are many functions that read from and write to a file. Um, so we discuss just a few of them below. Many of the problems with file input-output come from file connections that remain open unduly long. None of the ways to make sure that this never happens are both easy and foolproof. So on this course, we recommend that you open a file, you read it, or you write to it, 
and you close it immediately. This can be cumbersome, and for some purposes it is unsuitable, but it is close to foolproof, so that's why we recommend it. So, how do you open and close files? Well, here's how you open it. Um, you have um, this item, you have a file handle, which is just the name of a variable, because the file handle, that is, a file handle is the name of a variable, and the connection that you open is actually a variable. And um, you use the keyword, uh, sorry, the function open. So this is a file handle name. This is the function open. This is the name of the file that you want to open. And this is the mode of access that you want to use. And that's how we do it. And we'll have an um, example fairly soon. So we are now ready to engage with our text file. And it is a file called Pride and Prejudice Extract.txt. So this extract was created from the text file of the book Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Um, and you can go to Project Gutenberg. Here's a URL for that particular book. And you can download the text file. You don't even have to download it. You can do the uh, cutting and pasting directly from the Project Gutenberg website. It doesn't really matter what text you use. This is the text that we have chosen to use for the examples on this course. Project Gutenberg, by the way, is wonderful. There are lots and lots of books there, and they're all um, out of copyright. You should, of course, acknowledge that you use the website, and you should acknowledge the author, even though it's out of copyright. So, here is the open, and then we can have, uh, we can just use the read, and in, if we just use read, we have to specify the type, otherwise it's a bit of a mess. So now we're ready to read um, our um, extract of Pride and Prejudice. It is this particular file, and we simply write fh equals open, and we start typing the file name, and we can pr press tab, and it completes, and that is um, the open, um, and that's all we need to do. And then we can say pride and pre this raw is equal to uh, read. We have to give the file handle, so that is the connection that makes the read happen. And we have to say what kind of uh, data to expect, and we don't want to see them all. Oh, well, let's see them, why not? It's quite long. Um, and, uh, and then we have to close it, of course. So, okay, so now we have the file in a single string. Actually, um, we don't really want to see um, it has a single string, so the split function will actually split um, um, saying there's two j's, but too bad. And we just have to say what we're looking for, so we will give the new line character, and now it will split it into lines uh, like that. So that's quite a lot of code to do. And so, instead, um, we can read the file with a different way. Of course, we have to, again, open it. And then, instead of reading, we can say, read lines. And now, we don't have to say what the string, uh, that it has to be a string, because now it'll just read line by line. And uh, I don't want to give it the same name. So I'll give it pride and prejudice lines. Read la lines from FH, and then we close it. So now, um, having actually read it, um, we can also get rid of filter to, we can use filter to get rid of them. Um, 
we can just say filter bang. And what we want to have is that x, when this is true, so when the line that we have read, the x value, all of these lines, so these lines here, there's a, an empty line there, an empty line there, there's an empty line there, that appears to be a character that we don't know what it is, um, and we say, so if it is uh, an empty line, um, then we actually, um, so x equals equals that, and that's what we don't want, so we make that to be false. So when that is false, we keep it, and we are using uh, pride and prejudice lines. And um, this, in fact, is just an indication that this is the last few lines, and this is the first few lines. It's just a gap in the start of the, uh, of the file we're reading and the end of the file we're reading. One can also write to a file. For instance, if we want to create a file called newfile.txt, I can write to it f equals uh, open new, I have to make a string, new file.txt, and I must specify that I want to be able to write to it, otherwise it will not allow me. And then I can write uh, to that file via that particular file handle. As long as it is open, I can write what a boring bit of text and just enter that. It says it used 25 characters, and then I close F. Um, and I can again open F, uh, but not for writing, just for reading. And I can say read, read lines F. And there's just that one string, and I close F, and that's how it works. So that is um, how we write to a file. So let us summarize what we've got in this first lesson of week four. File uh, in input output happens in three stages. You open a connection to a file, you read or write to the file, and you close the connection. Files that stay open when they should be closed lead to problems on your computer. The programmer decides at the time of opening the connection whether the access is for reading or for writing or for both. And if the access is for reading, the programmer must always decide, also decide whether to keep existing data in the file or not. So that's the end of lesson one of week four. Thank you very much.